Well, we had, uh, for the first time in our hands, a long-range interceptor. It was clear that the F-4 was designed to fill a very deficient gap. We had entered a period when attack was high speed. We needed standoff. We needed quick responsiveness. We needed an all-weather capability. And that's what uh, we achieved in the F-4. If you had it to do all over again, is there anything you would do to change the design of the F-4 or the test program? No. No, I wouldn't change a thing. Hey guys, Spud here. And today we're taking a look at how to employ the AGM-65 Maverick in the new DCS F-4E Phantom II. The AGM-65 Maverick program was initiated by the United States Air Force and contracted to Hughes Missile Systems as a direct replacement for the AGM-12 Bullpup Command Guided Missile. Experiences of air crews over North Vietnam and heavily defended areas of northern Laos along the Ho Chi Minh Trail had shown the deficiencies of command guidance, requiring a very high crew workload and the inability to pull off the target and jink away from AAA or SAMs until the weapon had impacted the target. As a result, a key requirement in the development of the AGM-65 Maverick was fire and forget capability, as well as increased standoff range. Two massive improvements over the old bullpup missile. For this, Hughes used the common missile airframe and you'll notice the Maverick looks very similar to the AIM-4 Falcon and AIM-54 Phoenix series of weapons. First test fired from an F-4 Phantom in late 1969, Maverick saw limited service during North Vietnam's 1972 Easter Offensive against NVA trucks and armored vehicles in the area of the DMZ. However, the AGM-65 Maverick came of age in a little-known and little-documented battle, far from the lush green jungles of Vietnam. The Shah of Iran had procured hundreds of Maverick rounds to arm the Imperial Iranian Air Force's 32 F-4Ds and 177 F-4E Phantom IIs. In mid-1975, as tensions between Iran and Iraq soared to new heights, an Iraqi armored unit on exercise took a wrong turn and ended up on the Iranian side of the border near Karam Shar. IIAF F-4s were immediately scrambled and engaged the armored column with AGM-65As in a short but fierce battle that marked the first time an armored unit had been entirely routed by air assets thanks to the Maverick missile. In the DCS rendition of the F-4E, we can arm our aircraft with the EO-TV guided AGM-65A first fielded in 1972, the EO-TV guided scene magnified AGM-65B first tested in 1975, or the IR seeker head multi-zoom level equipped AGM-65D which reached initial operating capability in 1986. So, for today's tutorial, we're going to be flying an Imperial Iranian F-4E Phantom, but in order to show you guys the full functionality of the weapons, we'll be using an ahistorical loadout of AGM-65 Deltas. Alright guys, we are back in the office of the F-4E, and we'll get our tutorial started by first setting up our cockpit for the employment of AGM-65 Mavericks. Right off the bat here, we need to set our LCOS sight to air to ground mode and set a depression of 45 mils. This will slave our pipper dot in the center of our LCOS to the bore sight line of our Maverick seeker heads. This is very important because the feed from the seeker head of our Mavericks in the F4 is not ground stabilized like you may be used to in some of the more modern aircraft in DCS. As a result, we need to fly the seeker head of the weapon onto our target and then use its slew functionality as a bit of a fine tuning to lock the appropriate target that you would like to destroy. Next, we need to come down to our station select buttons and select the two stations that we currently have AGM-65s hung on. 
With the station selected and our weapon select knob in the TV position, this will start the 3 minute alignment period for the guidance and stabilization gyros of our weapons. So now is a good time to hack your clock. It's important that you don't try to activate one of the seeker heads or slew it prior to that 3 minute alignment period finishing, otherwise you will break the missile and it will become unusable for you. Keep in mind that you only have to worry about this 3 minute alignment period if you do a ground start. That'll be a cold start, hot on the ramp, or hot on the runway start. Next, we need to set our delivery mode select knob to the direct position, and then we'll come on down to the source select switch for our DSCG scope. We'll set that to TV, and then we'll come up and we'll fence in and set our master arm switch to the arm position. You know that everything has been set up correctly and the alignment period is finished when you see the two amber arm lights beneath your station select switches. We can see we're ready to go here because we've done an air start and therefore we do not have to wait for that 3 minute alignment period. Next, coming on up to the DSCG scope, to activate the first seeker head of your weapons, go ahead and squeeze the gun trigger. Regardless of the weapon variant you have on board, to slew the seeker head of your Maverick we need to simultaneously press and hold the air to air refueling release button and slew the seeker head via the weapon slew stick slash forward hand control keybind. Once you have a target beneath the crosshairs, we can command a lock on attempt by releasing the air to air refueling release button. If no lock on is achieved, you can continue to slew the weapon as previously described. If you would like to recage the seeker head back to the bore sight line, simply squeeze the gun trigger. In the AGM 65D variant and the D variant alone, squeezing the gun trigger again will step between the two different zoom options available to this weapon variant. Keep in mind, to do this, the weapon must be caged to the bore sight line, and if it is slewed off of bore sight, squeezing the gun trigger will simply recage it back to bore sight. Our target today is a small column of armored vehicles just outside of a hamlet and at the base of the fire that you guys just saw on the feed from our Maverick Seeker Head. While you can use the Seeker Head and the slew functionality of the Seeker Head of your Maverick as a poor man's targeting pod, I don't recommend doing that because it usually leads to frustration and sometimes even disorientation. So I highly recommend using your situational awareness, planning skills, as well as your Mark 1 eyeball to pinpoint your target and then fly that Maverick Seeker Head onto the target, use the slew functionality as a fine tuning adjustment to lock your target and then go ahead and rifle that weapon off. So we can see those targets down there, and that's looking pretty good, so why don't we go ahead and roll on in. At this point, I'm flying completely off of my LCOS. I'm not even looking at the feed from the seeker head of my weapon. We'll go ahead and roll out here, and we'll turn the autopilot on to the attitude hold mode. Turning the autopilot on to the attitude hold mode, or at least trying to trim the aircraft out to be as stable as possible, will make it much easier for you in the front seat or your Wizzo in the back seat to actually slew the seeker head of the weapon onto the target that you desire to lock. Failing to do so will cause the seeker head to bounce around quite a bit and make that task much, much harder. Another thing that's very important to remember is that your weapon is not that smart. It doesn't know that it's trying to lock a tank or a truck or an IFV. All it knows is that it likes to track the difference in, or contrast in the color between your target and the background, such as these armored vehicles on a black roadbed underneath it. So because of that, it's very, very easy to accidentally, let's say, lock a bush next to your attendant target or a telephone pole next to the highway. So having a steeper dive angle into the target will give you a better contrasting color between your target and the background. 
having a much lower angle in your dive will kind of muddle the background color and the weapon will be trying to look at multiple things all at once instead of just your target and say the roadbed behind it in this case here. So we'll unpause it at this point and I'll start to slew the secret head onto one of the targets. Once I've got it at least pretty close, I'm going to release that air to air refueling release button and attempt a lock on. Hopefully we can get one on this first pass here. There we go. And rifle. To fire the weapon, simply press and hold the bomb button until the weapon releases. We'll perform a jinking maneuver here to avoid any flak that may be shot up at us. And we'll roll over and we can see our shack. Nice. So we'll set up another attack here from another heading following the basic tactics of air to ground work. We can see that our armored vehicle targets down there have scattered to the sides of the road. This will make locking them a little bit more difficult as we won't have the big contrast of the roadbed behind the targets themselves this time. So once again, flying off of the LCOS and the Pipper Dot, we're going to pop the Autopilot Attitude Hold Mode back on. We're going to start slewing the weapon. And we got one locked. Rifle. Autopilot off. And we're pulling off of the target. A little bit of a jinking maneuver here because we definitely know that the AAA gunners down there are awake. And there's our shack. All right, nice shot. All right, guys, if you found this video to be helpful in learning how to employ the ATM 65 Maverick, please leave a like and a subscribe and fly safe out there and enjoy this beautiful game and the new F4E.